continue and you report to the proper number one you meet yourself. So well, as the question says, maybe build a simple most robust proportion is based on the current discharge and we would like to investigate how the report motion is depends on the relevant parameters and optimize your, uh, your setup by these uh, parameters based on the parameters uh, at the fixed input voltage. So here's the roadmap that we have. But first, we go to the different types of motors, and then we have the initial observation, and we go to the experimental setup and the theory part and the effective parameters, and we examine the efficiency of the system, and we, at the end we go to the conclusion part. So we have two different types of motors. The first one is the electromagnetic ones, which the rotor's motion is based on the magnetic field and the electric current. Uh, which nowadays in industries use these kind of motors much more than the other type, which is the electrostatic one, which the rotor's motion is based on the uh, just electric current, uh, which today I'm going to talk about one of these um, kinds of motors, with one of these types of motors, which uh, uh, its proportion is based on the corner discharge. So our setup consists in a power circle and a bandy graph, and the motor itself has a um, four electrodes uh, with the sharp blades on them and a rotor itself. So the most important part of this question is why the rotor is rotating. This is a view from the top of our uh, setup. If we zoom out the, one of the electrodes, for example, with the negative charges on them, because of the coronal discharge happening uh, in, around this rotor, uh, the air molecules around, uh, the, for example, here, these electrodes will be ionized and the single charges will go to accumulate on the edge of the uh, on the edge of the electrode. So uh, they wanted to just go to the furthest distance with the single charge. So they will go to the uh, go and uh, remain on the surface of the rotor, and the repulsion of the single charge will cause it to uh, will cause the rotor to rotate, and also the attraction of the next charge of the next uh, electrode with the opposite charge on them will cause this. Um, to rotate to and this cycle will happen again and again and it will cause our rotor to rotate. So in overall the two different forces that come to the one charge is the first one is the repulsion of the similar charge and the second one is the attraction of the opposite charge that we have. And also by this relation we know that the charges will dissipate on the rotor and we have the uh, and it's and as you can see here we have the relaxation time which relaxation time itself is equal to the rho multiplied by the epsilon. So, uh, for example, if we change the environment uh, around the rotor, for example, put our motor uh, in a place with a, a high moisture, uh, the relaxation time will decrease, so uh, the uh, charges will uh, dissipate sooner, so it won't cause our rotor to rotate. So, we go to the theory part. Here we have the based on the equation of motion, we, uh, based on the Newton's second law, we wrote and we have this uh, relation. And if we solve this uh, integration, we will uh, achieve to the uh, angle of velocity. So this relation for the angle of velocity. As you can see here, T here is the electric force, and we have the E, the uh, friction of the coefficient, the coefficient friction, and also we have the I, the momentum of inertia. And if the time of our experiment uh, reaches the infinite time, uh, then we will uh, achieve to the angle, maximum angle of velocity, which is equal to the T, the electrostatic, over the V, the coefficient of the friction. And also we have this chart, as you can see here, uh, which we have for the different momentum of inertia. As you can see here, the slope is changing because the momentum of inertia is related to the angle of velocity. But it's not related to the angle of velocity. So at the end, they will reach the same point. So we said that one of the forces that cause the system is the coefficient of friction. So how do we measure this coefficient of friction? First of all, we let the motor reach its maximum angle of velocity. So the next step is turn off the power supply. As you can see here in the video, when we turn off the power supply, the only force applied to the system is the friction. So when we plot the angle of velocity versus time, as you can see here, the slope of it is minus V over R. And as we have in our theory, uh, if we have the momentum of inertia, if we can calculate the momentum of inertia, we can easily have our uh, coefficient of friction too. So we go uh, for calculating the momentum of inertia. We assume this uh, rotor uh, with a disc and a cylinder. And by, some, uh, by the summation of these two momentum of inertia, we can have the um, total momentum of inertia. So as we uh, as already mentioned in the previous slide, then um, if we have the momentum of inertia, we can easily calculate the coefficient of friction. So we have the uh, third force as we, uh, 
what you mentioned, it was the electric force. So as we have this relation in our theory, the angle of velocity was equal to the electric force over V of friction, we have the V and Y experiments, we can have the maximum angle of velocity. So easily we can calculate the force of the electric too. And also we draw the we plus the chart of the angle of velocity versus time. And um, as you can see here, this is the theory of us, which you can see that they have a great agreement to each other. So for checking the accuracy of our theory, we draw these charts too as, as we have in our theory here. And the slope of this chart should be minus V over I. And as you can see here, theoretically and experimentally, they go uh, the same with each other. So we can see that they have a great agreement to each other. So we calculate the efficiency of our setup. Uh, of this system that I was talking about, and uh, the efficiency would is equal to the output power, which is the torque of the rotor and multiplied by the maximum angle velocity, uh, over the input power, which is V uh, multiplied by I, the current of the uh, electric that we have. Well, um, and here we calculate it and we achieve with this number. So we are going to uh, optimize our setup by changing the relevant and effective parameters that we have. The first thing that we change is the angle of the electrodes. Uh, as you can see here, this angle with the angle of velocity, uh, which as you can see here, we have a peak, and as we are uh, decreasing or increasing um, uh, beside uh, this peak, the angle of velocity is decreasing. So we can see that the best angle for it is 40 to 45. And also we change the diameter of the rotor. As you can see here, it has a limitation too, and uh, it will fix on the angle of velocity too. And uh, the number of the electrodes versus angle of velocity. As you can see here, the number of electrodes has a limitation. If we, for example, increase the number of electrodes much more than the limitation, the ionized atom that I was uh, that I already talked about them will be collected just by the next um, electrodes, um, the, na uh, the neighbor uh, electrodes. Uh, beside them, and uh, they won't cause the uh, rotor to rotate, and it, it will just uh, attract and, and absorb by the neighbor electrodes. So the, um, the uh, next parameter that I change is the distance of the electrodes versus the angle of velocity. As you can see here, it has a limitation to, and it has an inverse in relation to the angle of velocity that we have. For example, if we increase the distance much more than the limitation, the core discharge will not happen, so the rotor is not going to rotate. And if it decreases um, uh, less than the limitation that we have, uh, we will not uh, see the corner of discharge, and we will see an other phenomenon uh, like the sparks, as you can see here in the photo, which the sparks, uh, for example, is in the quicksand, nearby the phenomenon, a conductive path will be made between the uh, electrodes, the blades, and the rotor itself. Uh, which uh, the, uh, the charges will dissipate and will not cause the rotor to rotate. So by the changing these uh, effective characters that I was talking about, we have we optimize our setup and change uh, and we see that the, uh, we are increasing the maximum angle of velocity that we have, and we have uh, the theory and the experiment part. And when we uh, have uh, this comparison between theory and experiment, we see that they have a great agreement with each other. So we calculate the efficiency of our new setup by the way that I was uh, that I already talked about. And as you can see here, we reach to this number, and uh, we can see that uh, the efficiency is uh, 2.46 times greater than the uh, previous one that I was talking about. So in conclusion part, first of all, we talk about the reason why uh, the rotation of the motor, which was the most important and the main reason of this question, and we talk about uh, the rotation of it. And we have this um, um, relation for the angle of velocity and this uh, chart for the different momentum of inertia uh, because of the, uh, the effects of the momentum of inertia. And then we uh, optimize the setup with the, uh, changing the different parameters like the angle of the electrodes and, uh, for example, the distance of the electrodes with the rotor. And uh, we have the different charges for it and we uh, calculate the efficiency of the previous setup and the uh, new setup that we have with the, uh, that we optimize it with these relevant parameters and we have this uh, chart for the new setup that we have. And uh, here are my references and thanks for your guys.